That is literally so much nicer. This is so, like, it's square. So much, so much nicer. So now that, uh, now that we have these doors and windows installed, Greg just put this J channel around the door and I'm gonna run this stone into it now, which means all these pieces gotta be cut. Now what I try to do is the ends of the pieces, even though they're like a universal piece, it does have the color kind of wrap around it. As you can see here on this side, this is the cut edge. Now I can promise you, over time, this kind of just all blends in together, but I try to take the pieces with the factory ends and stick that side into the door jams because I think it gives it a little bit more of a natural look than a cut edge. Now there's gonna be times where I can't avoid that. I'm gonna to have to use the cut edges like over on the end where we have a 26 inch um, section between each window. Both ends are gonna be cut, but that's just the way it has to be. Now another thing that you might notice is that I've got a small piece right here and that's because my full, if I would have put a, another full here, I would have only had like a three inch piece. So what you want to do is just cut yourself a smaller piece, make sure that it doesn't end up on a joint. As you can see, I made sure that that didn't happen. I'm just past it. And then we just keep running. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how I do the corner and this corner is a little bit unique because it also has a window super close to it that not only do I have to cut to the window tight but also when I make those cuts it's got to be good in the corner so I think this would be a good spot to you know kind of share with you guys first thing that I have to do is the piece that's going to die into the corner I got to take this tongue off so that it can um, come in nice and flat I'm just gonna remove that this piece is gonna sit right here, and I've already got a, what appears to be like a two-thirds piece. And I'm just gonna set them together, bring them in nice and tight, so that I like how this looks. And sometimes you gotta just push and pull and make sure that everything is where you want it. It's okay to have some stick out, some uh, be recessed, because it's, once again, the more imperfect it is, I think the more natural it looks. And then once I get this right where I want it, I'm just gonna go ahead and tack a nail. And you may be asking yourself, why did I not use a full corner piece? So these are the universal corners. They have a, a nice fully finished edge. They're very straight, they're somewhat flat so that they can be used on inside and outsides. Well, I don't wanna waste that on the other side. So I cut that into you know, maybe a third and a two third, a half, whatever I need so that I can use the other side of it. Maybe when I get up to this guy right there, something like that. So don't waste a full, cut it into pieces um, and you'll, you'll save a lot of material that way. Certified freak, Ugh, seven days a week. Yeah. Gonna make that pull out game week. Park that big Mack truck in his little garage. You don't really mean that, do you? Huh? You don't really mean that. No! Your Pinto. Okay. Very nice. Now in order to continue running this corner, I've got to make sure I can get this whole wall kind of staggered out. So we're just going to run some of these bottom rows. One thing I forgot, Greg. What? I'm going to put my hearing protection back in. I and got mine in. Definitely something you want. 
So what I think is important, once you've got this course on here and you start planning the next course, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about, since we're going through a window, um, I'm gonna have to cut around this window and the nail thin is only gonna be on this side. There's not gonna be any nail thin through the bottom, which, or the middle here of the window, which means that I've gotta use some construction adhesive and it's not gonna go anywhere. I've done this, it works just fine. But what I like to do is over here, I've got another set of window opening here that I'm gonna want to get some nail thin in. And what that means is these panels are three foot each. I'm gonna go ahead and find about the middle of this window section, measure over like six foot, which means this is about where I want this row uh, panel to be so that when I cut a rip underneath this window, my next cut piece is gonna be halfway into that opening, giving me as much nail, um, nail fin to fasten to the wall. And then going into the next window, I'll also have nail fin, and then I'll have one piece of um, complete ripped and then the next one will be and actually the nice thing is with this tongue and groove system if you get the left side and the right side fastened and you have one piece in the middle it'll actually hold in really nice just by the tongue and grooves so what i want to do is get myself a piece that's about 28 inches to start for this guy right here and i'll wait till i get it cut and try to get the pieces looking good before I measure over to this window and make that cut. Greg, go ahead and put that in the groove. Bring it my way about as far as you can. And what I wanna do is I wanna figure out where I'm gonna put this, which is probably something like that. That's probably about my distance. So that's where my window cutout is gonna be. And then the next thing I need to do is get a height for the rip. And that should give me the mark I need to make this cut. Truth drum roll. Probably better, right? I mean, that's the great thing about stone is it's uh, like perfect, perfect. Well, the imperfection is what makes it look good, I think. The imperfection is what makes it look perfect. No, you could apply that to life. It's perfect. So, this piece right here, another little tip, something I try to do is I need a 15 inch piece. This joint line right here is 15 and a half, which means that's a perfect place to cut. You don't want to have just a tiny little, you know, chunk of stone away from the joint because it looks a lot less natural. So if you can make sure that you cut through a joint line or a grout line, you're going to be better off. So this is where I want it. So here I've got this guy that's going to come into this corner, right? Now what I really need to do is I need to make sure that this piece is running square to this top. So I'm just going to set my square back here and make sure that I like it. Because what happens is there is some movement in this panel. And that's because this has a built-in rain screen on it. So you can see that this flange is actually protruded out from the panel. And that creates a gap on the back side. So if any moisture gets in here, it has plenty of space to go down and get out of there, not causing any issues in the future. So what I want to do is make sure that I'm running square. And then that's what I'm going to use to get my cut dimension for this piece going into the window. It's 13 and 3 eighths. So I'll go cut a 13 and 3 eighths. -er. I'm always going to cut it just a little heavy because I can always cut more off. I don't want to cut it too shy. Let's set that into the window. And then hopefully this guy, oh yeah, I got to take off the, looks like it's a little bit long, which is okay. I cut it a little heavy, but I also got to take off this tongue. say it's too big. I'd say that turned out pretty darn good. Heck yeah, it did. I'm gonna call that a success.
we've got this course ran up and we're going to come back to this corner, now what I've got to do, since I've got to get a outside corner going into the window, it's really hard to get this in where you want it, mark it, measure it. So what I like to do is just take the two pieces that I know are coming together and we're just going to get them really close to where we think we're going to like it. I'm going to make a mark on the top of this piece. Now, Greg, put that in, get it in your groove, yeah, right there, and just bring it out. I'll just take my tape. I'm at 13, maybe in a 16th. So now I'll measure 13 and a 16th from this line, make my cut, and it should be, should be, fingers crossed, should be pretty close. That's still the same battery? Yeah. What call is that? Six, seven? Uh, eight. Eight. Mm -hmm. I think that looks so much better, dude. Yeah, I would probably tend to agree with that. with that yeah well there we have a corner that dies around into a window and you know I don't I mean it's I'm not gonna argue with you and I'm not gonna sit here and say that this looks like fake stone when I'm showing you guys this close-up detail. But what I can tell you is when you drive by, when you walk up, um, if you don't know what you're looking for, you're not going to see this stuff because it just is hidden very well when you look at the big picture. And right now we're focused in on this corner detail. Once we get our trims on, once we get our steel on, it always amazes me how good it looks once it's all done. Yes, it's fake, but it's quicker it's cheaper, 50 year warranty. Um, you really just can't go wrong. I like it and we're gonna keep moving on this because we got a ton of stone to put up. All right, so now that we have a lot of this stone going up and uh, we're at our top course, it's time now, you can see and maybe hear Greg in the background, he's got the laser out, the rotary laser, and what he's doing, he's going around and just making another grade mark just to ensure that everything is you know we've got a nice reference line now we did have one and maybe we should have thought about this it's just slightly below where this trim is going to be so we're going to bring another one up so that we can uh, snap some lines this is a double angle i guess like a z trim and this is what's going to flash the top of our stone so this gives us a nice straight line it gives us a nice clean line and it brings any water coming down the wall out over the stone you know this stone does have a good rain screen built into it so if any water were to make its way in in any of these joints it's going to just work its way down and right out the bottom we've got that felt paper we've got our house wrap uh, so we should be all good there and what this is going to do is give us a nice place to set our steel and run that around the perimeter so that's what greg's going to work on i'm going to keep uh chiseling away at this stone and getting around the entire building um, but the nice thing is, I'm hoping by the end of today, we might actually throw up some steel uh, on this wall here and start covering up some of this house wrap. So stay tuned. It's exciting to start putting some of these trim details on. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And we're going to silicone this before you yeah, close yeah. it? Yeah, so if you want to grab the silicone and yep. blob some on there. Here, where's our line? Let's uh, let's kind of get this sucker. I, I want to make sure this is this sits nice like that. Right there? Sure. Just match it. Let me just, uh, let me just eyeball it. And it's a little hot. Okay, yeah, that's going to be good. Okay. I just want not water coming here. And this is all going to get covered up. Nice work. 
Oh yeah, looks good, man. Looks good. I know. Uh, which way you want these? You want the labs facing that way? Yeah. So I'm just gonna run Overlap. the other team this way, that way. Yeah. So you'll overlap right there. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I think I probably. I think I probably want to take uh, more off of this guy. Push this back more. So it covers that up a little bit better. Yeah. I don't. I think I just yeah. Cut that off on an angle. Because well, I think I went like more back here is what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I went I, like an inch. Yeah. You went an inch. Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever this was. Like you I could feel. honestly probably go three quarter because literally all I care about it's is just I just want something lip. here that we can caulk. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, that's cool. Looks good. No big deal. Now, unfortunately, this door right here is not going to be in maybe for, I don't know, close to a month. But I really want to get this side of stone up so that we can run our steel across to this corner. So I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, attempt to install our stone up this corner so that I can remove them later without having to take this side down and then put my door in and then come back and kind of lace these and weave them back in. I'm sure it's going to be a pain in the butt, but it's better than waiting um, for potentially who knows how long to get my door in before I finish this steel. Sometimes you have to adjust these a little bit, specifically when you're using smaller pieces, because when they go together sometimes, they uh, they go together really tight. I just wanted to keep this gap nice, because if you put too many small pieces together, they'll actually, the, the dimensions will shrink a little bit because they'll get really tight together, versus when you're running big pieces, uh, sometimes, you know, because there's some inconsistencies or imperfections, which is what makes this look so good. But hopefully that makes sense. Sometimes you have to spread apart these to stay on point with the rest of your wall. And like you can see here, because we're stacking all these small pieces together, the joints are getting really tight, which means I just need to work them up a little bit. So this uh, roofing nailer, the cordless, hoseless, whatever, battery powered roofing nailer from DeWalt has been pretty, pretty amazing for us. We haven't had any issues. It's jammed a couple times, usually because it's hit either another nail underneath or something, but it's been pretty darn consistent and I'm definitely loving it. It sure beats having to pound nails and put screws in. So I thought this might be a cool shot. You can see, I just made this cut. You can see the metal. This is the metal flange that is embedded into this piece. And that's what, you know, gives it a little bit of structure, but also that is what this panel is hung on the wall with.
Awesome, we got another wall done and this is great because now this whole side here has stone on it. We can finish our cap Z trim that we call double angle trim that we can then install our steel on this wall. So I'm really excited for that. We wanna finally start seeing some steel siding going up on this building. Uh, it locks it down, protects it from any inclement weather and it just is that much closer to getting those uh, uh, parts of the project done, which means we can move on to the next thing. Um, over here, this kind of stinks that I have to take all this back off in order to install the door, but it is what it is. It allows me to keep moving forward. Now we're gonna head down this wall and finish this one. All right, let's go check on Greg, see how he's doing. He's been working on that double angle trim. He loves to do those wraparounds. Did you just do a wraparound? Yeah. Oh man, let's go check it out. You can see Greg has been working on this double angle trim it's looking good you can see what we've done here in the windows we got a little tab up and that's so we can put a bead of sealant right there when our j channel comes down the side of the window greg's working on a uh, nice wrap around that was a tough one huh I had to go into the window and everything that wasn't that bad ah that a boy walking the floor so why you been over here for the last 30 minutes I got all these cuts to do, bro. I got trims to do. Huh. Okay. It just takes time, you know? All right, man. Can't, I'm rush, not, can't rush perfection. I'm not here to judge, man. I mean, I will judge. That's my job. I got to make sure it's right, but that looks great. Of course it does. Looks great. Let's put a little dab here. there my guy. I see it. You see it? Uh -uh. Oh dude, it's on your face. It's right there by that staple kind of. Here, wait a second dude. Let me try this. Oh, I see that. There. Right there my guy. Alright. I love the laser. Perfectly plumb. Ugh. Lasering up. One second, one second, one second. I can't see from this angle where, oh, there it is. Okay. Well, that feels pretty good. We haven't put a sheet of steel up for, how long, Greg? Well, I think we May? it's been like three, three months. Yeah, it's been like three months since we've hung any wall steel. So we were itching to do that. It feels good to get even one sheet up, uh, but we'll get we'll get more. Just stay tuned. But uh, I just had to step back and take a look at it because it feels good to finally get some color up on the wall. <laughs> Bro, remember that video that we got of uh, us in the us in the lift and like the lift was bouncing and shaking. And we had our shirts off. We gotta go down. I don't remember that. It does. It does sound like something that we would do. Let's watch these windows. Got what it feels like get scratched by the steel. Huh? Got what it feels like get scratched by the steel down a little bit. Okay. You know, unfortunately, I uh, I don't know why, but we're like a quarter, quarter inch long on our steel from where the stone is. And that could just be over the course of those five runs of stone, we just grew enough. I would have used the eight inch dimension of the stone, but sometimes it does grow a little bit. Um, so I got to cut down the tops of all these pieces.
smoother than butter. Today's my son's birthday. He turned 13 and I just got a message from my brother and sister-in-law saying that they just had their third baby, uh, a baby girl. So I'm an uncle now like, I don't know, freaking 20 times I feel like. Greg, I'm just doing one pull out of it just to check check for level and then let's go. One more. I just need to do one more. I just got to. Just one more. <laughs> I swear I'll stop after this. <laughs> Can we get a mark? Uh, I don't think you need it, do you? As much as I want to stick around here and keep running this steel, I got to get out of here. I got a birthday party to go to. It's, I don't even know what time it is. Five. Crap, it's after five, Greg. Yeah, I gotta go. We'll see you guys tomorrow.